Hello, Kia ora. My name is Max Kennedy. I'm the Contestable Investments Manager here at the New Zealand Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. Welcome to this year's Endeavour Fund Research Programme Round. We really appreciate the time and expertise you put into assessing applications for us. Our Science Board relies heavily on high quality assessments to make funding decisions, so we really appreciate your efforts. Before I go into details, I'll give you a brief overview of the research programme mechanism. Research programmes are about developing ideas. They support the development of ambitious, excellent, well-defined research ideas which collectively have credible and high potential to positively transform New Zealand's future in areas of future growth or critical need. Research programmes is the larger of the two investment mechanisms for the Endeavour Fund. They can be three to five years long with a minimum MB contribution of $500,000 per year and no upper limit. Developing well-defined research ideas is the key concept. With the National Statement of Science Investments stating that we are aiming to shift the portfolio to higher risk with longer term horizons to impact. Your primary responsibility is to assess proposals by applying the scoring guide. Although impact is assessed as part of the overall ranking, your role is to only consider the excellence criteria by considering the evidence in the proposal, matching it to the scoring guide to determine your final score, recording your decision and the reasons for it. Enter your assessment, which will include your scores and comments into the IMS portal. Assessors also need to flag potential conflicts of interest regarding the applications you are assessing and to tell us as soon as possible at the beginning of the process so we can reassign the proposal if necessary. Lead assessors need to prepare and record assessment summaries based on the comments of individual assessors. The summary should bring together the results from individual assessors. It is important to note that this is not a consensus view but summarises the views across all assessors. Our role at MB is to provide information and guidance to support the assessment process and you as assessors. This includes guidelines for assessing research programmes inclusive of scoring guide, a training package containing helpful hints and exercises. MB will not involve itself with the assessment of specific proposals. The Science Board makes shortlisting and funding decisions based on finalised assessments. The assessment criterion for research programmes you are assessing is excellence. This excellence criteria is made up of two sub-criteria, science excellence and team excellence. The first is about the science context of the proposal. How good is the proposed science and has it been well designed and planned? The second is about the ability of the team to deliver the proposed science. Consideration as to whether Vision Matauranga policy is relevant to a proposal is applied at the excellence stage. If relevant, it must be included in the assessment of excellence. Attributes are features which make up each of the sub-criteria. They are taken from the wording from each criteria in the Legal Gazette notice for this fund. Let's spend some time exploring what attributes mean for the assessment process. All attributes contribute equally to a score for a particular sub-criterion, unless one attribute or other is either fatally flawed or plays a dominant role in defining the proposal. In these instances, it may significantly influence the score for that sub-criteria. In the training package, we have provided some examples of how different combinations of attributes should be assessed. The training package also includes some exercises which you might want to work through. For this sub-criterion, assessment should focus on the extent to which research is well designed, well performed and how it leverages additional value from wider research. Assessments must have particular regard to whether the proposed research science or technology or related activities progress and disseminate new knowledge, 
possess scientific risk, technical risk or innovative approaches, are well positioned in the domestic and international research context, which means that the proposed research takes account of existing knowledge and research, have a credible research plan which includes risk management. Each of these attributes are described further in the scoring section. Note that excellent science is fit-for-purpose science that can include basic research, pure basic research, targeted basic research, applied basic research, or experimental development. All such types of research can be excellent science. Where relevant, you will also need to consider the extent to which the research responds to opportunities presented by Māori knowledge, which includes Māori issues, needs, contributions to innovation that are relevant to the research. Note, a good proposal can be either high-risk, stretch, novelty, or be very innovative. Score the proposal based on the best case provided. Risk or science stretch is described in the assessor guidelines and could be one or both of science risk or technical risk. The reason for investing in research which has risk or stretch is that it may increase the potential for valuable results which have impacts for New Zealand. You need to consider both the level of risk remaining after mitigation steps are in place and the proposed benefits. And this suggests that there could be a large number of possible combinations. For practical reasons, the scoring guide in the assessor guidelines only gives you some of the possible combinations. You should be flexible in deciding what combination applies to the proposal you are assessing and how that might affect the score. As an example, if the risk is equal between two proposals, then the proposal that creates the better additional value from that risk should receive a higher score. MB is looking to invest in research that has scientific or technical risk or stretch because it may have the potential to deliver greater benefit to New Zealand than less risky research. Thus, the extra benefits from taking the risk that remains after the mitigation steps are in place should justify the level of risk. In assessing risk, you must consider the level of risk the strategies the applicant has proposed for mitigating the risk, they should have well-managed research plans and a credible approach to risk management. The additional science value created from taking the risk. As a quick guide, the table outlines some, but not all, of the combinations and how they may impact scoring. The proposed team should have the demonstrated mix of complementary skills, knowledge and resources to deliver the proposed research, science or technology or related activities, such as engagement with key stakeholders, including Māori, and to manage risk. A key consideration is, does the application have all the disciplines and skills involved at the appropriate level to complete the research outline? Remember to include vision mātauranga in your assessment. If there is a vision mātauranga elements in the proposed science, then the team will need the skills to be able to deliver the science effectively. We are now going to look at how to assess vision mātauranga. Before we start, I want to acknowledge the international assessors amongst you. We are very aware that as an international reviewer, you may not have the New Zealand context or awareness of vision mātauranga. That's okay. Detailed guidance is part of the assessor guidelines. The vision mātauranga policy guides the science system towards unlocking the innovation potential within Māori knowledge, Māori people and resources held by Māori. In essence, this involves the science system and Māori connecting more effectively. To be clear, there is no expectation that vision mātauranga will be relevant to all proposals. But if this is the case, there is an expectation that the applicant will explain why not. We have asked applicants to clearly state if vision mātauranga is relevant or not relevant to their proposal. Therefore, your first task is to locate that statement in the IMS portal. If the applicant has indicated a yes, you must include vision mātauranga in your assessment. 
You do this by using the vision mātauronga indicators set out in the scoring guide. Those indicators tell you what vision mātauronga related evidence to look for and how to score it. If it's a yes, then assess. If they indicate no, meaning there is nothing specifically relevant to Māori in the proposed science, you need to confirm if that statement is credible or not. Because significant links between the proposed science and Māori knowledge and relevant stakeholders are sometimes overlooked by applicants, we need you to assess the credibility of a no statement here to the best of your ability. If the no statement seems credible, you do not need to give any further attention to vision mātauronga criteria in that particular proposal. However, if you do not think the no statement is credible, that is to say you think that links between the proposed science and Māori knowledge or relevant stakeholders have been overlooked, you will include vision mātauronga in your assessment. Record your decision and your reasons for it in the comment box at the end of the proposal assessment section. We encourage you to provide comments that support your assessment of how well the proposal has addressed vision mātauranga. For example, the proposal appears to have failed to recognise relevance to Māori and intellectual property implications arising from the use of indigenous species for commercial application rather than simply stating, vision mātauronga is not well addressed. The scoring guide in the assessor guidelines is your key tool and should be kept within arm's reach and referred to often while conducting assessments. The scoring guide contains reference statements for each sub-criterion and will help you decide where to score a proposal from a low of 1 to a high of 7. You will notice that for every score there is specific guidance provided on how to incorporate vision mātauronga into the assessment. It is particularly important that you keep the scoring guide close and refer to it during the assessment so that you can check that your scoring is consistent with the guide. The terminology in the scoring guide is also useful to use. For a score of five, descriptive words such as high to moderate, more than significant, comprehensive, appropriate, no gaps, new, novel, meets good proactive standards, good and effective, are good qualifiers to use. Once you have selected a score and formed a commentary for each of the two criterion, you will need to record the results in the IMS portal. Please note that IMS works best if you use Google Chrome. After you've logged into the portal and responded to the conflict of interest questions, you will find that each of the two assessment criteria has a drop-down box and a comment section. You can select a score from 1, being the lowest, to 7, the highest, from the drop-down box, and then provide a comment on the strengths and weaknesses of the proposal in this box. Ensure that comments made under the scoring box relate only to that criterion. For example, if you are scoring the quality of the science team, then comment only on this in the comments box. Your scores and comments should align to the scoring guide. Do not give glowing comments and a low score, or vice versa. Wherever you make a comment, please keep it objective, impersonal and impartial. You are asked to provide analysis on aspects of risk and vision mātauranga for each proposal. At the end of each proposal, there is a question which asks whether the proposal was a close match to your area of expertise, with the following options. Aligned, well aligned, very well aligned. We have selected you because you've got the ability to recognise and assess good science. Sometimes it may seem that some proposals are not directly central to your area of expertise. However, in rare occasions, if you think there is a very significant disconnect between your skill set and a proposal assigned to you, you can decline it by contacting MB and we will reassign it to someone else. And now for a bit of housekeeping. Next, we'll talk about our joint responsibility around confidentiality and ethics, conflicts of interests, where to from here, the resources and support available. Confidentiality is of critical importance. 
The way we treat confidentiality and conflicts of interest is critical to the integrity and success of the entire assessment process. To ensure the safekeeping of all proposals and assessment material, all information must remain confidential. If you are contacted by an applicant, ask them to contact us directly and let us know immediately. At the end of the assessment process, you must destroy or return all saved or printed documentation relating to the assessment process. And remember, assessments are accessible under the Official Information Act and may form the basis of feedback to applicants. Your comments should relate only to the criteria you are assessing, be objective and impersonal. New Zealand and the scientific community are well connected. Conflicts of interest do come up. Before you can begin your assessment, you'll be provided with the research abstract and a full list of all members of the research team. Use these details to determine if you have a conflict of interest, be it direct or indirect. Examples of a direct conflict would be if you were directly involved with the proposal. An immediate relative was in the applicant group, or you stood a chance of benefiting financially if the proposal was funded. You can decline a specific proposal if you have a direct conflict of interest. An indirect conflict would be if the applicant worked in your organisation or an organisation you worked with, you had a personal relationship with a team member, were a potential future user of the research, or if you were involved in a competing proposal. A full list of conflicts of interest are in your guidelines. If you think there is a direct conflict, declare it immediately so the proposal can be reassigned. The assessment time frames are quick turnaround, so doing this sooner rather than later is essential. If you think there is an indirect conflict, get in touch with us and we'll help to determine next steps, as indirect conflicts need not always require you to decline a proposal. You will not be able to assess the full proposal for assessment until you've confirmed whether there is a conflict of interest in the IMS portal. As mentioned earlier, we've provided you with guidelines which include a comprehensive scoring guide, a training package which contains helpful hints and training exercises, IMS portal guidelines for assessors. Note that the IMS portal works best with Google Chrome. We highly recommend you read the assessor guidelines, complete the exercises for assessors, and read the portal guidelines before you start your assessments, as these documents contain essential information that will guide you in your role as an assessor. If you have not received these documents, let us know. We also encourage you to read or consult the Gazette Notice, Call for Proposals, Investment Plan, and the Vision Mātauranga Policy. All of these can be found on the Assessors Resources page of our website. If you have trouble assessing any of these documents, again, let us know. To support you through the assessment process, email any questions you have to assessors at mbie.govt.nz at any time. Include your telephone contact details and time of availability if your query is a matter of urgency, and we will respond as soon as possible. When sending an email inquiry, it would help us to help you if you put the subject of your inquiry in the subject line of your email. This will enable us to pass your question on to the right person quickly and provide a swift response. Examples of the types of subjects might be Excellence, Conflict of Interest, Vision Mātauranga, Availability. We will post frequently asked questions on the Assessor's resource page and include those asked by applicants to provide you with further context. What's next? We will notify you by email when proposals have been assigned to you for assessment. We will also let you know if you are a lead assessor. You will then need to log into and use the IMS portal to access your assignments and record your assessments. There are comprehensive guidelines on how to do this. If you don't already have these, let us know. Please note that proposals are not assigned all at once, but over a period of time. 
This means that more may appear each time you log into the portal. Please check by logging in frequently. Thanks very much for your commitment in assessing these proposals. We hope that your experience will be stimulating and rewarding. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thanks again.